Hey everybody, Pumpkin here. Today I wanted to go over the recent patch we just got in Gwent. Uh, there's a lot of changes and uh, let, let's get right into it. So uh, at the start, we can skip this part right here. Um, a lot of cards were nerfed. These cards are all full value on refunds for milling value for three days. So uh, if you haven't done so already, if you need the extra scrap, you can go ahead and disenchant them. Uh, I'm not gonna go into them much. Basically any card that was changed uh, full refund. Uh, full list of changes. New improvements. So, new card added. Hemdall. This is pretty cool. Uh, SK got a new card. This is the only new card from uh, this patch. Basically, Hemdall is a unit. You play an SK. It's an engine. You play it on the board every time a warrior damages one of your opponent's card. Hemdall gets boosted by the amount damaged. So, if you play Hemdall and then you play Hjalmar and damage something by 6, Hemdall gets plus 6, which is pretty cool. Um... It works well, very well with Ice because you can combo Hemdall and then immediately play Ice with uh, Hjalmar into pinging a card. So that can get it rolling and sometimes out of range of being damaged. So yeah, pretty cool card. Uh, pushes the warrior archetype a little bit in SK. So all around, cool. Uh, it's now possible to see which cards remain in your deck by clicking on it. Uh, this is probably the best thing about the entire patch. Uh, this is probably one of the greatest things CDPR has ever done for Gwent. Uh, it's a deck tracker. So before this, we've had deck trackers like Gwent Up or Gwent Tracker, where it would, it would tell you what's in your deck, but it was always a third party software. Uh, now Gwent does it for you. All you have to do is right click on your deck in the bottom right hand corner and it shows you all the cards remaining. It is, it's, wow, I love it. I mean, you can't not like it. Uh, you need to see what's in your deck and you click on it. You never have to go, you never have to wonder what's left. So. This is something we've wanted for two plus years, and we finally have it, so awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Recruit costs can be seen when you open a keg. So if you open a keg, you can see the recruit costs. I, whatever. I, it's useful, I guess. Cards can now be filtered by their type in the deck builder. So uh, in the deck builder on the right-hand side where you get to select um, like premium, non-premium, owned, unowned, you can now click on like artifact only so you can see a full list of all the artifacts and then all specials. Those are the two main categories that they added. They also added the units category, which cool, whatever. So this is a nice filtering thing. If you want to play a deck with a ton of artifacts, you click the artifact button and you get a list of all the artifacts. Same goes for specials. Cards set naming has been standardized. It's now possible to click the left arrow in keg purchase window to show maximum number of kegs. Okay. Neutrals. Xavier Lemons recruit cost change from 8 to 10. Ability change to deploy melee banish up to 3 cards in enemy graveyard. Range banish up to 3 cards in your graveyard. Uh, so this used to be 7p. I don't know why they said 8 to 10. It's 7 to 10. Um, and you can only banish 3 cards instead of the full graveyard. Uh, this is... Yeah. This hurts, obviously. The card went from seeing not much play to probably no play. This card, you're not going to play it. Too expensive. 10p? No. Even if Big Monsters is dominant, you just play uh, Erden. Erden's 11p, and it has a better effect, and doesn't brick ever. Well, not as often as Lemon, so you don't play this card. This card sucks. Unplayable. Vestimir power change from 4 to 3, so all the Witchers were nerfed by 1p. Um, yeah, it's been working so far. I've been playing the patch for three days now and there's a lot less witchers like a lot less like i'd say less than 50 percent of the decks right now are running witchers generally the decks that do play witchers are decks that need the thinning so now if you play witchers you're doing it for the thinning because you need to thin your deck and you need to draw all your cards by the end of the game so witchers are still there for thinning um but it's not like this explosive power play in round one siri power change from six to four i was actually pretty surprised by this siri was a very strong card. I didn't think they'd go six to four. I thought they'd go six to five. Six to four is, ouch. Uh, th this is borderline unplayable. Doing four damage is eh, not too difficult. Kyronex is the card that comes to mind, and Kyronex is kind of auto included in every deck. So, Siri surviving without some kind of hand buff is going to be pretty difficult. I don't think you play this card anymore, other than maybe an Aridin deck, and even then, I don't think you play Siri. So. This is painful for Siri, but to be fair, Siri was kind of seeing play in a lot of decks. I mean, if you had 6P, or rather 8P, you slot Siri in. 
just because they would allow you to take a round that normally you have no business taking. Roach got toned down by one point as well, just like Witchers. Um, it's good. I like the change. Less uh, tempo play in round one. I think it's important. We were seeing way too much tempo, and it just wasn't good for the game because your opponent would slam like 16 points and you'd play a four, and you're just too far behind. Uh, this makes it so that they're not auto-include. Also note, Roach getting nerfed by 1p does uh, nerf a Sire. So a Sire normally was 8 provisions, uh, and you got 10 value. You played a Sire onto Roach, pulls it up the Roach, 10 points. Uh, so that combo went down by 1p, which is pretty nice. That combo is a, it's still really good. It's still auto-include in every Nilfgaard deck, but it, it's toned down by 1 point, which is nice. Frenzy Dao, power change from 7 to 6. Um... I like this change. Frenzy Dao was another one of those cards where you just auto include it because seven for eight isn't bad. Uh, if you draw it in round three, you didn't mind holding on to it because playing a seven in like a three card round three is above average. So it, it was still good. Um, the downside is, I guess it makes artifacts a tiny bit better, but uh, the, the the card was kind of silly. So I, I don't mind this change at all. Regis recruit cost change from 11 to 13. I was pretty surprised by this. The only decks that really play Regis are Ethne, and even Ethne decks didn't really play Regis. You just played Gigni, um, and Ethne got hit pretty hard. So, yeah, this one was a surprise. Uh, the only decks that can play Regis are Ethne and Crack on Crate. Crack on Crate does not want to play this card because you have Wild Boar of the Sea. Ethne does not want to play this card. Nobody wants to play this card. I don't know. I don't know why they nerfed this card. I guess it was just getting too much value when it was played. Well, it's going to go from not played to, well, not played. So, I, whatever. Free scrap, I guess. Epidemic. Cost change from 8 to 9. I like this. I was worried that CDPR wasn't going to touch uh, Control Monsters. And Control Monsters was pretty good. Or, not pretty good. It was one of the best, if not the best decks in the game uh, at Tier 1. Other than, like, Crack SK. So... I, I like this change. They also nerf scores, so we'll get to in a second. But nerfing these definitely hinders control monsters. Yeah. Dragon Stream. Dragon Stream was broken. It got insane amounts of value. I'm glad they nerfed the card. Um, thankfully, they didn't nerf Novellan. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if they nerfed Novellan by like 1p or something. But they, they hit Dragon Stream pretty hard. Um, Dragon Stream is still playable at 12p. Uh, you have to be hitting four units, which is not that hard to do at all, especially in like a nine plus card round. Uh, so still a good card, but it's not just like absolutely insane. So it, it's more balanced. Scorch, recruit cost change from 11 to 14. Uh, this goes along with Epidemic. The card was seeing a little too much value because um, Witcher's won, Witcher's Roach. So Scorch and Epidemic already got toned down a little bit because of the Witcher and Roach change. But um, Scorch got nerfed again. Um, one of the side effects to this is technically control monsters is better, or big monsters is better because, well, Scorchers are going to see as much play, which means decks that can punish tall removal are going to see more play, which would be big monsters. Um, so in theory, big monsters should run rampant because, uh, Lemons was nerfed, which was one of the counters to big monsters. Scorch was nerfed, Gigni was nerfed, right? All these cards that kind of countered big monsters got nerfed, so... Yeah, you might be seeing a lot of big monsters running around. Easy ch um, counter is run like Estrays of Spala for movement and then Erden. You reset the entire row and you completely neutralize big monsters. So the Strays is up to you. Strays is actually pretty good right now because uh, Engine NR is pretty popular and Engine relies on, well, Engines. Uh, and a lot of them are row locks. So Strays being able to move them out of a row uh, essentially kills the Engine. Uh, enraged Ifrit, reach value removed. Uh, enraged Ifrit had like, what, two reach on it? And then Chironex had no reach, infinite reach, however you want to put it. Uh, so it, and they were the same card basically. So it's kind of weird that it had reach on, in the first place. So they removed it, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Bomb Heaver, power change from four to three. Recruit cost change from six to five. So they toned the card down um, by one and one. So it, it, it's still, the same card it's just a little cheaper to run so uh artifact removal is a bit cheaper so which should mean that if people are running artifacts it's a little easier to tech against uh, you're saving 2p if you're running two of these so uh, i like the change it's a slight nerf to artifacts and i'm okay with that 
Uh, Gigni, ability to change to deploy melee, destroy the highest units on an enemy roll with a total of 20 or more power. Uh, it used to be 15. This is... Wow. Um, the only decks that really played Gigni a lot were Ethne decks. Ethne got hit pretty hard with the Ethne change. We'll get into that a little later. Basically, uh, Ethne, instead of having three charges for all three rounds of one ping, she now has four charges, or ping one for each charge, uh, and that's for the whole game. So you get four pinged whole game. Um, so you're, you have to be a lot, you have to save your pings. Uh, and cards like Shiru and Gigni demand pings. So you're not going to see this card much anymore, uh, especially because Witchers were nerfed. So Witchers usually came out for 12 to 16 depending on if they had roach so meeting the gigni requirement back then was much easier now it's 20 and witchers were nerfed to 3x by 3 so 9 or 12 with roach uh so basically this gigni is never going off un unless it's like a really wide board or like a really long round um but more often than not gigni will brick my initial reaction was i don't like this change it makes the card unplayable but it's actually kind of nice having or not having to play around Gigni constantly. I can buff, like, say some Thesis, the Immune Dragon, and Scoia'tael above 15. I can buff it to, like, 16. It can have, like, the 8 base, and I'll buff it with Unicorn plus 8. And I don't have to worry about Gigni, so it's kind of nice. Um, yeah. Once again, this is another buff to big monsters. So, yeah. Big monsters, they weren't really nerfed. Forktail was really the only card that got nerfed. Uh, and the Werewolf card. But, uh, yeah. I like the change overall. It, it makes the game a little bit more fun. You, you don't have to worry about this card constantly. Siri Dash, ability to change to after five turns on turn and draw a card. Uh, used to be four. I like the change. The card was kind of silly. It was a little too easy to pull this off, uh, especially because of the way end of turn effects work. You could play it uh, and you could pass and it'll still go off and draw a card. So uh, this card and Siri were kind of defining round ones. Um, the card's still good with Aridin. You can still throw it down on turn one with Aridin and give it immunity and you'll still get your free card. Uh, but by no means will you see this in every deck. So I, I think it's a fair nerf. Um, if you can support the card or give it immunity via Avalok or Aridin, it's still going to go off whether it's four or five turns. You just have to play it one turn earlier. Wolfsbane, recruit cost change from eight to nine, ability to change to damage all units with even power by two or damage all units without power. So the change on this is it hits all units, including your own units. Um, Wolfsbane was a card after, what is it, Froth, Golden Froth was nerfed, uh, everyone was playing it, Wolfsbane was in any deck that could, well, work with it, so anything that could ping, so Ethne and Kraken Crate decks auto-include Wolfsbane, because Wolfsbane would get anywhere from, like, 16 to 20 plus value, Wolfsbane was nuts, um, so they nerfed it, obviously, I like the change, uh, you can still build a deck with Wolfsbane, you just have to not run a lot of units. I was actually playing a monster deck today that runs, what, Bridge Trolls, I think? And Jotun. Basically, you don't play any units. Uh, it's kind of like a heavy removal deck. You have Wolfsbane, uh, you'll damage max one of your units, uh, and you can smash your opponent's side of the board. So it's still a playable card, it's just, it's not auto slot into any cracker ethne deck you actually have to build a deck around it which i think is fine uh i'm surprised they nerfed it from 8 to 9p but i mean it still gets really good value uh, i i think this would have been enough right here the all units but eh. 8 to 9 it's fine it, it's still a really good card blaze recruit cost change from 12 to 11 so dragon got a little buff which is nice uh i love dragons a lot of the decks that i play have dragons in it so this is a nice little buff Elf and Onion Soup, recruit cost change from 7 to 6, so it goes from unplayable to unplayable. Cool. Trial of the Grasses, recruit cost change from 9 to 8. Uh, this card boosts a Witcher to what? I think 12? So if you have a 4 point Witcher, I guess if you have a 3 point Witcher, it gets 9 value. Yeah, with the nerf to regular Witchers, this card it's okay. Um. I think it's 12. I think it boosts to 12. Eh, it's okay. Uh, the problem is... Uh, yeah, I, I, if you're running enough Witchers, I guess Trial of the Grasses is okay. Uh, assuming it does boost to 12. If it's boosted to 10, it's terrible. But, uh, like, Garrison is just strictly better. Yeah, maybe it's okay. Um, 
you have to be running a lot of witchers to run this card triple witchers is not enough you, you have to be running like a witcher nilf guard deck with multiple witchers uh, and you could use it to keep an engine alive that's kind of cute Myrtle brock another dragon recruit cost change from nine to eight love the change uh makes the card uh playable Merkta Brock pings two units by two, uh, but it's on an order. So if the order does go off, it's an eight for an eight, which is a fair card. Has removal on it. And it has dragon. I love it. Great change. Iris, recruit cost change from nine to eight. So this card is five strength. Uh, depending on which row you play it on, it removes either a weather or an artifact. This card was pretty bad because it was way too expensive. Uh, now that it's been turned to eight, it's... It's still expensive. Um, yeah, you have the flexibility, but there's not a lot of weather, especially because they fixed fog. Uh, they fixed a fog, which was basically... Uh, so, old fog, two damage uh, four times on a row to one unit, tallest unit. Um, but if there are no units on the row, it wouldn't tick, right? So if there's a two and it kills it, that's one tick. The next turn, if there's no unit, it doesn't tick again. They fixed it and made it so that it does tick even though there are no units. Um, this kind of kills the card because getting eight for eight was fair because you were forced to have movement and you could lose points if there was like a one as the tallest unit. Um, I don't really love the change to the weather because it, it, weather was already seeing close to no play. Now it's just, no. Because if you're not getting 8 value for it or 7 value for it, it's pretty bad. So, kind of sad that they fixed it. I wish they would have just made it so that it lasts until it gets all the ticks, but whatever. So, no more fog unless you're playing like a no unit deck. Or, it's good against R&R &R and it's good against Dragon Stream. Dragon Stream got nerfed, so less people are going to be running it. So, I, you're still not going to play Iris unless you we get a weather meta. Dragon Stream, maybe there's a Brewer movement deck where Dragon Stream is really popular, then you might start running, running Iris. But otherwise, you're still not going to play Iris. Too expensive. Iris Companions got a buff. Power change from 4 to 5. Iris Companions is... You play it, it's 4 strength. Well, 5 strength now. Um, you pull a card from your deck, and then it randomly discards a card from your hand. Um, the randomly discarding a random card from your hand is the bad part, obviously. You could pull out a priority gold card and then discard it. So... Uh, risk reward is usually not worth it. You, you, the only re reason you run it is because there's a must have card that you have to have in your opening hand, and Royal Decree isn't cutting it, and you have to run Iris Companions as well. So, we don't have a deck like that right now, so. I mean, it, it's a nice buff, but you're still not going to play the card. Skellige Storm, recruit cost change from 10 to 9. Still sucks. Uh, does one damage to a whole row, and then does one damage again. Uh, you could use Vader Makar and. Use it to proc another. Uh, it's not very good. It's not a good card. Lacerate is still better. Yeah. Uh, it's good with like Dagger or Great Swords, but that's it. So, yeah, not a good card. Monsters! Aridin! Leader change to boost a unit by three and give it immune. Uh, used to be four, so a slight nerf. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't nerf a Mulligan on Aridin instead, but uh, yeah. This is. I mean, it still gives the immunity effect, which is why you play it. Losing a point isn't the end of the world. Um, the problem is ser both series got nerfed, uh, and series were both of the two series, series and series dash, were both auto included in uh, Aridin deck. So Aridin got hit from multiple corners, but eh. if you need the immunity, you're still playing Aridin. Uh, Rakus Queen got an extra mulligan, which is cool. Uh, Rakus Queen was seeing no play. I still don't think it's going to see a lot of play. Honestly, I hope they boost it to three mulligans because, yeah. Arrakis Queen is a archetype with Consume and, like, Ruhin where you need to find Ruhin, um, which means you need those extra mulligans. So I, I hope they give them it another mulligan because it's it's not that good of a deck, especially because they did nerf Ruhin and they nerfed Forktail. So I, I hope to see another mulligan on Arrakis Queen or some more uh, support for it later on. But, uh, yeah, it, we're getting there. We're getting there. Karanthir, power change from 4 to 3. Uh, this is another nerf to Ruhin because you would play Karanthir with Ruhin because you could have two Ruins or you could play Ruin in round 1 and then, or sorry, Karanthir, Ruin in round 1 and then regular Ruin in round 3. Um, Karanthir was a pretty nutty card. You could use it with like Siri. You could Karanthir like a Siri dash and then Arid in it and then play Avalok and like 
give the other Siri immunity, and you could have two of them on the board, which is pretty cool. So Kranthir is a pretty nutty card, and he was pretty cheap at eight provision. So it's not a very surprising change. Um, I just wish this had maybe happened, like, I don't know, next patch, uh, or a patch where Aerodin got a little bit more support, because, uh, yeah, it, it seems like Aerodin's just getting hit a little too much. Yeah, okay. Alpha Werewolf power change from 5 to 4. Uh, this is pretty significant. Um, you could think, well, okay, you play a card higher and it just thrives up. It's not a big deal. Uh, the biggest change is any Thrive units at 4 don't get boosted by Alpha Werewolf. Uh, and that's any kind of Archspore, Drowner, or Necker Warrior. So none of those are getting that boost from 4 to 5, which is kind of unfortunate. But to be honest, Alpha Werewolf was broken. It was a 5 for 5 with immunity, which... That alone is good enough to see play in most decks, or almost any deck that plays tall units. Uh, the fact that it had Thrive on it was just insane. So, still a very good card. Uh, it just goes from 100% auto-include to... You should probably be playing it in big unit monsters. Forktail, power change from 5 to 4, recruit cost change from 5 to 6. Uh, we saw this coming from miles away. Forktail was top 3 bronze cards in the game alongside slave infantry and arbalist so no surprise here they nerfed it twice right so power change from uh, five to four and recruit cost five to six not a surprise honestly the card was insane i mean the card would still see play if it was seven provisions so it still sees play like it's still almost auto include the card's insane uh it works with thrive so if you have a well in this case because it's four now if you have a four point thrive unit and we'll take alpha werewolf for example uh you play fork tail it damages the werewolf down to three and then the body shows up uh boosting it back up to four so the your thrive units never get damaged unless of course the thrive unit is over four if it's five and you play it you won't it will damage it so it's still a good card it's just not a hundred percent auto include in every monster deck well it still might be but it's not completely busted. We were hitting recruit cost change from 11 to 12. I don't know why they did this. Uh, yeah, they buffed Arrakis Queen, one extra mulligan, but that wasn't going to make it OP. I don't know. Ruhin wasn't broken. Uh, I, I don't think you should be discouraging people from running Ruhin. Yeah, Ruhin can get insane value. If you play a bunch of engines, none of them get locked or removed, and you get an entire like 10 rounds to keep consuming Ruhin every round. Uh, Whatever. I mean, if you were playing Ruhin in your deck, you were probably building an Arrakis Queen with a bunch of vengeance like Slizzards, so you're still going to play Ruin. I'm not a huge fan of the change, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, I really hope we get some more support for this, because the archetype is a lot of fun to play. It's just, it gets countered pretty easily. Wild Hunt Warrior. Ability change to deploy damage a unit by the number of Wild Hunt units you control. Uh, I don't know what the change is. I think chat told me that it used to be melee only, so now you can play it on range as well, if that's the case. Cool. You're going to go from not playing it to not playing it. Skellige, Savage Bear, recruit cost change from 4 to 5. So this is the bear that 2 points played on the board, ping a unit by 2. If your other Savage Bear is in the graveyard, uh, it increases this number by 2. Uh, this card was auto-included in every Skellige deck because it was a, it was a wolf. Except the second wolf did 4 damage instead of 2 damage. Uh, if you played it with Operator, you could get up to doing 6 damage. Because you would have 2 in your graveyard. Honestly, yeah, it was auto-include. But it was kind of one of Skellige's cooler cards. I'm kind of sad they nerfed it, honestly. It's still a good card, but yeah. This this brings the power level of SK down a smidge. Um... Yeah, every now and then you're not going to run the card because it's too expensive at 5p, but it's uh, still a good card, uh, especially because removal is a lot more expensive now because they hard nerf Ethne, so still a good card. I would have preferred them not nerf the card, but eh, I can understand it. They want to make removal a little bit more expensive. Uh, Queen's Guard recruit cost change from 6 to 7. Uh, no one was playing this card. I don't, I don't know why this card got nerfed. Um, I guess the idea was, uh, for those of you who don't know, Queen's Guard is a four strength card. If you ping it, you get to pull out another Queen's Guard. You get to spawn another Queen's Guard. So this worked well with Kraken Crater Spear. 
Um, problem was, if it got removed, you felt really bad. I guess the idea was Ethne is getting hard nerfed, uh, which means a lot less removal from Squeto, which means engines are going to be much more powerful, which is why we'll get into a second NR got nerfed uh, a bit. With that being said, I don't think they needed to nerf Queen's Guard. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about this. I guess Reddit might get salty because if this card doesn't get answered, it can get like 20 plus value. I guess. Um, I still don't think they need to nerf it, but all right, whatever. I guess they're covering their bases. Lippy got nerfed from 8 to 10. Uh, it's not surprising Lippy was getting insane amounts of value replaying cards like Commander's Horn, uh, Witchers, or the most common with Roach. It's still a good card. Maybe after the Witcher nerf, it might not be as good. Yeah, I mean, the card was insane. I would have liked to, to go to 9. I think 10 is a little too much, especially because Witchers and Roach were also nerfed, and those cards were auto included in Lippy decks, so... Uh, you might not be seeing much Lippy anymore because the nerfs are pretty bad. Uh, but it's understandable. Wild Boar of the Sea, power change from 5 to 4, crew cost change from 10 to 11. Uh, Wild Boar was probably the strongest gold card in the game with Kraken Crate and Wolfsbane. Uh, I, I mean, it's, you could be getting 25 plus value with this card. I, you could still do it. I played this card today. I was getting 17 to 20 value. The card's still absolutely insane. Uh, I was playing a Dragon SK deck with Ockvis and Blaze. I play Ockvis as my second to last card. They generally don't have removal anymore because I played like Light Long Ships earlier or like Blaze earlier. Uh, I slap Ockvis on the board. He goes off. He damages the entire enemy board by one. And then uh, Wild Boar comes in and just hits everything again by two. So you're doing three damage to the entire enemy side of the board, which is just insane. Uh, this card is still a very good card it's just slightly weaker but i mean let's be honest it, it was broken uh they could have changed this to three strength and it would still be insane uh this is auto included in any crack deck obviously card is still insane uh it's just not as broken as it used to be so you're, you're still going to see this card everywhere it's still very very strong but uh it was toned down by two Grimace, power change from 2 to 3, ability change to order of range, play bronze alchemy card from your graveyard. Grimace was pretty silly with froth, or golden froth. Um, this isn't a huge surprise. They could have nerfed it by 1 or 2p and said they gave it the order tag. Um, I actually have not seen a single Grimace since the change, so they might have killed the card. Uh, generally, if you have a card with deploy that's really strong effect... Uh, and then slap the word order onto it, it makes the card unplayable. So, yeah, this card might be unplayable unless they buff Golden Froth. But, yeah, I, this card's not going to see much play anymore. Um, Shiro used to have the word de um, order on it, and it's all zero play, and then they gave it zeal, and then all of a sudden it went from zero play to play in most Squiatel decks because of uh, the support with Bruver Ithlin and uh, Call of the Forest. So, uh, yeah, rest in peace, Grimmest. Uldaric, recruit cost change from 7 to 6. Yeah, it's not bad. Uldaric's actually pretty strong, especially because removal is necessary. I believe the phrasing on Uldaric is it's 3 strength. Um, when you play it on the board, it has order. Uh, 3 charges ping an enemy by 1. Uh, if they have 2 damaged units, it gets zeal, so you immediately get to use those 3 pings. Uh, this is similar to, like, a mini blaze uh so at 6p it's actually pretty good it gets good value uh you should generally have two damage enemies because you play crack on crate so yeah good card i mean if people are running engines which they most likely are because of the ethne changes this card's good yeah i would start playing this in your deck northern realms so a lot of people were whining and moaning about Northern Realms getting nerfed. Northern Realms was pretty bad last patch, and people just didn't understand why Northern Realms got nerfed. Why would a faction that saw little play get nerfed? That makes no sense. Well, no, it does make sense, because Scoia'tael got slaughtered. Um, and the only thing holding NR back was Scoia'tael, because Scoia'tael would just remove everything they played. Well... There's a lot less Squiatel now. Uh, granted, a lot of decks are playing a lot of locks because 
locks well kind of deal with engines so uh maybe nr still isn't good but uh I, i've had some pretty successful nr games um i've been playing this charge deck with uh sarah and johnny uh by fanderman i played against him a couple times and decided to give it a try it's actually pretty good it plays enough engines where they'll lock the first one two maybe even three but it doesn't matter because you'll get to like full test pride at the end or if one of your engines stay unlocked it gets insane value literally one or two engines gets out of control uh and you play like seven so uh nr is still good it's better than it was before because of the square tail change but uh yeah let's run through these king full test number of redraws changed from four to three this is no surprise full test was the best nr leader by a long shot um we'll, we'll skip to this down here phil evangel this really surprised me phil evangel was a leader that was seeing close to no play and when they leaked that phil evangel was getting altered i was really excited because maybe they changed phil evangel's ability make it better but they nerfed it because Phil Evangel was too OP. No, uh, they nerfed it because I don't think they want any leader having four mulligans. Yeah, uh, this list is incomplete. Skellige, they don't mention. Kraken Crate got nerfed too. Kraken Crate now has three mulligans. So it looks like they nerfed mulligans across the board. Anything that had four mulligans now has three, uh, which is fine, I guess. Not a huge surprise. I, I really hope they give some Phil Evangel love in the future because Phil Evangel is... I, I tried. He's just not good. He's just not a good leader. Uh, anyways, King Foltest. So, nerf. Not surprising at all. Still a very good leader. King Hensel. Number of redraws increased from 2 to 3. More mulligans. Yay. Uh, I've still yet to find a good Hensel deck, but... The more love, the better, I guess. Pikeman. Conditional damage changed from 3 to 2. Uh, Pikeman was a card... That pinged a unit by one, and if it killed it, it did three damage after. The card was getting about seven value worth for 5p. The card was kind of insane. Um, yeah, it got toned down a bit. Not surprising at all. Uh, now it has a high of six for five, which is still good. Uh, it's pretty easy to proc the one damage because of cards like Revenant and uh, Sabrina. So uh, still a good card. It's just not insane. Full test pride recruit cost change from eight to nine. Uh... This isn't that surprising, full test pride. If it doesn't get moved or locked, it just wins the game, basically. The card's insane. It gets, I mean, I've had full test pride for 40 plus value. Uh, I'm sure people have gotten like 100 value out of the card. I think a swim clip comes to mind where he gets like 100 plus value. So still a phenomenal card. It just wins you the game if it doesn't get answered, which requires them to have one movement or one lock as their second to last card. Uh, and even then, you just play Ale. I've been playing Ale in my engine decks. So they'll lock it, it just doesn't matter. You just Ale it and go along with it. So still a very good card. Yeah, it hurts, but who cares? It's still an insane card. And uh, Recruit Cost change from 6 to 7. This is not a surprise. The card was broken. Um... If you had any boost, which was uh, Visigoda or Sergeant, you boost Anna up from four to five, and then she boosts left and right by one. So on play, assuming you had any synergy, which generally you do, you play Visigoda or Sergeant, uh, she was a six for six immediately. Engines should not get immediate value on play, like for the most part. Uh, if you're playing an engine and it gets five for five on play, that's kind of silly because it starts getting more value after generally engines are supposed to be more expensive but if they don't get answer they start to obtain value they equalize and then they start to get more value um an example of this would be reinforced ballista it's a three it has one charge uh when it comes back to you when it comes back to your turn it pings for two so it gets five value if you start giving it more charges it starts getting more damage um, if it gets removed instantly, you played a three for five, which feels pretty bad. But if it doesn't get answered, it does insane amounts of damage, uh, with Demovin. Uh, and it was just insane. So because of the Scoia'tael nerf that we'll get into in a second, I'm not surprised this card got nerfed. It's still a very strong card and can run away with the game. Boosting left and right by two every turn is still really good, especially because you have Tritum Infantry, which every time it gets boosted, pings an enemy by one. You slap that card next to Anna, and all of a sudden, Anna plus that, you're getting three points a turn every turn. And if your opponent doesn't have a point of damage, that's three points every turn. That can add up really quickly. So, yeah, still a very good card. 
Prince Stennis, number of charges given changed from 2 to 1. This is a pretty painful nerf. Stennis was 5 strength, boost an enemy by 2 and give it 2 charges. Um, this hurts a lot. Uh, honestly, I think they should have just nerfed it by 1 strength or by 1p. Losing a charge is basically 2. It's, it's 1 to 2 value. Uh, usually 2 though. So this is pretty painful. Stennis isn't going to see much play now, but yeah, I, I guess they were really worried about it. the engines going crazy because of the lack of Squatel. So I'm not too surprised, but I, I think it was a slight over nerf though. Uh, Sorceress reached value change from two to one. This is not a surprise. Uh, we'll get into Blue Mountain Elite in a second in Squatel, but basically every bronze card that does three damage uh, now has one reach. So Sorceress was the only bronze unit that had two reach that could ping a unit for three. Now it's on par with every other um, faction. So not a surprising change. They're just evening it out. Sabrina, damage change from three to two, recruit cost change from seven to six. Uh, initially, I thought this kills the card because it's a conditional lacerate and lacerate is seven. Why would you want to play a conditional lacerate for one extra P difference? Uh, it turns out this card is still seeing play in every single NR deck. <laughs> Yeah, it's still really good with Drog because of the Spectres. It gives you a free Spectres. It still works with Pikeman. It's still a good card. It works with Aquavis. Yeah. It's still seeing play in every NR deck. Well, every full test deck. So, yeah. Um, I, I guess... Fine. Uh, doing three damage was basically a Dragon Stream. It's kind of nuts. The card was pretty broken. So, I, I guess it's balanced now. Uh, my original thought was the card is unplayable, but everyone's still playing it, so I guess it's still good. Uh, Reynard, recruit cost change from 10 to 9. This card, I believe, every time you play a card with, like, order or charges, it gives that unit a charge. Um, you gotta be playing a lot of charge cards to make this, and it's like 10p or something. It's expensive. Well, n now it's 9 uh, it, it's still pretty expensive. Um, yeah, it's not very good. It, it's it's too costly. You're, you're usually okay on... You usually don't need more charges. So, yeah. Uh, may, maybe in the future if we get some more charge cards. But uh, right now, no. I, I, you're still not going to play this card. Tribute Shaver, Crew Cost Change from 6 to 5. Uh, this is the card. It's like 3 strength. Ping a unit by 1 if it kills it. It pings the left and right by 1. Um, it has one charge, which is, it's okay. Uh, not great because having your enemy units at one is kind of hard to do. So this, this card's, I mean, it's better, but it's still not great. This next one, I blew, it blew my mind. I cannot believe they did this. Um, th th this right here kind of like balances all the nerfs. <laughs> Reinforced Trebuchet, cost change from 6 to 5. Reinforced Trebuchet is a ranged locked card for strength. Every turn, ping uh, a unit on your opponent's range row by 1. So, immediately on play, it is a 5 for 5. That's nuts. It's a 5 for 5 engine. That's crazy. That's insane. This card is really good. Um, yeah, okay, there's counterplay. Your opponent only stacks on the melee row, but... Um, there, 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 are, there are cards that punish people ro uh, when they row stack. Cards like Lacerate, Dragon Stream, Sabrina, um, Ragnarug. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm very surprised they buffed this. Yeah, I, I have no idea why they, why they buffed it. Um, this card is insane. Draugr crew cost change from 12 to 13. Yeah, I mean, once again, not surprising at all. Uh, also, there's something they didn't mention here. It, it's farther down in the bugs. Uh, but John Natalis is a 6P card, uh, melee locked. Every time you play a order card, it automatically gets zeal, right? That's kind of cool. Basically like a free full test. Um, but it works with Spectres now. So 
if you have a specter on the board and you ping one of your opponents one drops and you spawn another specter if you have john natalis on the board the new specter has zeal you can go again and if you kill another one you spawn another one and you can go again you could just keep going um i had an opponent who had a ballista give it like 10 charges i was like oh whatever i don't care he's gonna do 10 damage who cares um and the specters just started rolling because he set everything up for one he started rolling and then he finished off with a hubert it was like an 18 point hubert and there was no anna it was just specter pings and ballista ping that blew my mind um I, I did not see it coming whatsoever. So, yeah, it got nerfed, but it got severely buffed with um, John Natalis change or fix, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's still a crazy card. Draw gets insane amounts of value. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a surprising nerf. The card was already really, really good. Um, yeah. So, all in all, for NR, there's a... I mean, this card wasn't seeing a ton of play. Full Test Pride. Most of these cards that got nerfed were cards that were getting nutty value. Um, and the changes are warranted, especially because the faction that was countering them got slaughtered pretty hard uh, in the removal category. So, yeah, NR got nerfed. But, I mean, they got a, two little buffs over here. This one's actually pretty significant. Um, yeah, NR is still going to do very well. I think NR is... Tier 2 right now. Uh, the reason why it's not Tier 1 is because everybody is playing locks. Like, Dora Gary is, like, auto teched in every single deck right now because people are really scared of NR. Uh, Scoia'tael, Phil Evandrel, redraws change from 4 to 3. I was surprised by this, but it seems like CDPR just doesn't want any leader having 4 mulligans, so... Whatever. Kind of sucks, but... Yeah. What are you going to do? Ethne, leader ability, change to order, damage the unit by 1, charge 4. So... This is the biggest nerf in Squiatel, like in the history of Squiatel. Um, Ethne was OP, obviously. Three pings uh, for three different rounds. Basically allowed you to remove any engine. If they had a four-point engine, you would ping the engine by three and then finish off with an Ethne ability. Uh, this would allow you to set up cards like Epidemic, Scourge, Gigni, Shiru. Uh, not a surprising change uh, that it got nerfed. I, I think it's a little too hard. Uh, I'd like to see Charge 5. I think in the past three days, I've seen two Ethnes. Uh, none of those were for myself. Uh, I I see no reason to play Ethne. Bruver is better. Like, always because of Shiru. Um, Bruver on Shiru is so good. Like, I love it. it. It's The first card I put into every deck is Shiru, Ithlin, Call. First three cards I put into every Squirtle deck in a Bruver deck. Because they're just so good. There's so much synergy. Um... Yeah, sure, it's just still a really good card, especially with Bruver. Uh, yeah, I, I don't play Athene. It's just, unless you really want to play Gigni or you really want to play Scorch. Otherwise, Bruver is just better. So, uh, yeah. Rest in peace, Athene. It, it was... It was fun. It was fun. Panther recruit cost change from 5 to 6. Um, yeah, Panther did not need to get nerfed. But, yeah. It, it seems like anything that did three damage got nerfed. Uh, we'll, we'll get the officer in a second, but uh, they, they, they killed a lot of cards that were doing three damage. So Panther, Panther's okay because Squiatel isn't as popular. Squiatel was maybe 40% of the meta. Now Squiatel is like 10%, maybe 15% max. Um, so Panther's okay. It's a, it has removal, which is good. It's good against NR. So if NR starts seeing a lot of play, you're gonna start playing Panther a lot. Uh, also, most Squirtle decks play like Roach, so you can still find Panther value. So right now I'm running like a one of with Panther. It also works well with Roach because you can call of the forest onto Roach, and then pull out a Panther, and then it'll pull Roach back out, which is kind of cute. It's not bad if you need those extra three points of removal. That combo works out. Bowman, power change from 3 to 2. Um, I, I guess. This card wasn't seeing much play. Yeah, this hurts. The card was seeing max. It was getting 6 for 5 if they played a unit on the back row, on the ranged row. Now it gets maximum 5 value. Um, 
Yeah, it hurts. Rip. Milva power change from four to three. Um, Milva was one of those cards where you kind of ought to slot it into every Squirtle deck because she was just good. It was an immune body that you slap on the board, and every turn you play a Squirtle unit, it would boost itself by one, which which is good. Um, the problem here is it got nerfed again down a little farther with a bug fix. Milva reads whenever a Squirtle unit is played, boost self by one. Um, this last, before this patch, whenever you played a trap or a Squirtle trap card, uh, like Crushing Trap or um, Mahakam Horn or Pitfall, uh, it would boost Milva by one. This no longer happens. So Milva doesn't get those boosts anymore. So like Trap Squirtle got nerfed kind of hard because you cut you you relied on milva getting value from those traps so milva got nerfed twice <sighs> the fact that milva is not an elf makes it so that you don't really want to play it in an elf deck with aileron and that's kind of the only kind of square tall you really want to play so uh yeah you're gonna see a lot less milva rip uh she's she's still okay if you're playing a very centric square tall deck with not a lot of non square tall cards but uh other than that deck uh, you're probably not going to see much Milva. Blue Mountain Elite now has reached one. Um, this card was one strength, ping an enemy by four if there were no other units on the row. Um, you would use it to remove an engine. The fact that this has reached one now makes the card literally unplayable. Uh, yeah, it is unplayable. You will never play this card ever unless NR is like 80 plus percent of the meta. This card sucks. Don't play it. Dole, Blathana, Bomber, power change from 3 to 2. Now, now they're kind of pushing it on the nerfs for Scoia'tael. Yikes. Uh, Bomber was 6 provision, 2, well, 3 strength, and then it would ping a random, important word, random unit on the ranged and melee row by 2. So, assuming you hit two twos, it would get 7 value for 6. But it was random. So if there were any ones, and you can't ping off the ones anymore because Ethne is garbage, so you're playing Brewer, so you have no control of pinging the ones. Now it's just RNG. So, yeah. I don't know why they nerfed this. This card wasn't even seeing that much play. Um, Rip Squirtle Bronzes. Feels bad, man. Uh, yeah, you don't play this card anymore. Officer, recruit cost change from 5 to 6. It was 2 strength. Uh, ping an enemy by three or boost an ally by three. <sighs> yeah. Um, this card was good because it had three damage on it, so you could remove engines. Uh, now it sucks. It's a five for six, best case scenario. That's not good. That is not good. Don't play this card. It sucks. So, yeah. Scoriatel is getting hammered. Hammered. Not, not, not only did Ethne get massacred like you can't play ethne anymore unless yeah no you're not playing ethne anymore officer yeah rip feels bad the, these changes like i i would have been fine with this change but the bomber change was kind of pushing it the bowman didn't need to get nerfed whatever i don't know rip square tall i guess uh, removal Squirtel. So Squirtel is still good. I've been playing Squirtel. I've been pretty successful with it. It's just not an all-in removal deck anymore. Um, it's more of like a mid-range deck. You have some removal with cards like Shiru. Uh, you still play cards like Unicorn, Kyronex, and uh, Milva. So you still have the ability to remove engines. Uh, you have Siren for lock, but uh, you're not removing everything, which... Yeah, I love Squirtel, but Squirtel was kind of hurting the meta because... You literally could not play engines because Squirtle removed everything. So, uh, yeah. I mean, overall, I'm happy with the nerfs to Squirtle in that it makes other decks archetypes more playable, right? You can play an engine deck and not just feel completely hopeless when you queue into Squirtle. So, yeah, I mean, I hate the changes, but I also love the changes because it, it does push other archetypes into playability. Um, I, I kind of just wish they, like, just reworked all these cards. Bowman's fine. Panther, fine. But, like, Bomber, Officer, and BM, BM, whatever, BMUs, whatever. But these two cards, I kind of hope they just make them different cards. Just do something else. Because they're, like, I'm never going to put these in my deck. They're just not good enough. Skag. Sheldon Skag. So, Squirtle actually did get some buffs. So, that's awesome. So, 
Um, while removal tell, if you want to call it that, got nerfed very hard. Probably, I mean, not probably. Uh, without a doubt, got nerfed the hardest other than maybe reveal Nilfgaard. But reveal Nilfgaard was... I mean, it, it yeah. Um, yeah, it got some buffs. So Sheldon Skaggs power change from 2 to 3. Uh, Sheldon Skaggs is 8 provisions... Uh, three strength now, and it damages a unit based on the strength of Sheldon Skag. So if you boost this with a Dwarven Agitator from three to five, uh, it pings for five, so it's 10 points on play, which is really good. You use Ithlan on it, it goes from three to seven, and it's a 14 play, assuming they have a seven or higher. Uh, Sheldon Skaggs is actually a really good card now. Um, I play Sheldon Skaggs, two Agitators, and two Dwarven Skirmishers in... A few Squayatel decks, and that alone is good enough, just because you, you need the Skirmisher so that the Agitators don't brick. Uh, but Sheldon Skaggs, good card. Um, yeah, if you don't have any Dwarf or any hand buff, any Ithlin, no Philavandral, it's a 6 for 8, which is underwhelming, but it has the potential to be insane. It also works with Call of the Forest. Uh, if you play a Skirmisher and you call the Skirmisher and pull out Skaggs, uh, it comes out at 6, and it pings the unit by 6. So, yeah. No, Skag Skaggs is a very good card now. Um, yeah, good card. Uh, Gabor, recruit cost reduced by 1. Um, it's an okay card. It, it's obviously auto-include in any all-in-dwarf decks, or all-in-dwarf deck, but those aren't that good. I've tried them. You usually play Philavandral, and Philavandral is very lackluster. So... Yeah, he's okay. He's not bad. Problem is, he's not really playable in anything but all in dwarf deck. So, yeah. Um, that could change if he went down to 8, or there are some better dwarfs. But, uh, yeah. Dwarfs are getting some nice little buffs here, so that's cool. Uh, maybe we have all in dwarfs coming, I don't know, 3, 6 months from now. Eisengram, recruit cost change from 10 to 9. This is a card, it's 4 strength, play it on the board, boost all your elves by 1, and it becomes an engine every time you play an elf. Uh, boost Isengrim by one. Uh, this card went from unplayable to still unplayable. This card is not playable at nine. It's just not. Um, you have to have five elves on the board for this card to break even. Which means you have to draw it in round one, I guess. Or really long round three. This card just sucks. I, I don't, whatever. This card, I'll consider playing it once it goes down to eight P. 9p, still garbage. Mahakam Volunteer, recruit cost change from 6 to 5. Another dwarf buff. Um, this is the card where melee played on a row. If you have a dwarf on the row, it pulls out the other volunteer. So similar to like Imperial Brigade uh, in Nilfgaard. Um, it's a good card. Uh, if you're playing dwarfs, it's obviously auto-include. Uh, because in a dwarf deck, you want as many dwarfs as you can get. So it's thin. Good card uh, in a dwarf deck. Because it does still have the requirement that you have a dwarf on the melee row when you play Mahakam Volunteers, it's not a card you can just throw into any Squayatel deck. It has to be a dwarf deck. So, um, nice buff to dwarfs. Half Elf Hunter, reach value change from 1 to 2. Uh, this is a card you would play in a trap deck. Not really. I mean, I played a trap deck and I very quickly took this card out. Uh, basically, reads I think it's 5p, 3 strength, ping an enemy for each artifact you have in play. Uh, it does one damage for each artifact you have in play. So if you have two artifacts in play, it does two damage. Um, this artifacts do count for traps, or traps count for artifacts. So if you have two crushing traps and an incinerating trap on the board, it pings for three. Yay! Um, problem is traps suck. Like crushing trap is good, incinerating trap is overcosted by a lot. Um, Yorvith's Gambit is complete garbage. They nerfed it too hard. Pitfall's okay in a very dominant control meta, which is not what it is anymore. Uh, it was good because the meta would literally control monsters and control Squirtle, which made Pitfall Trap very good because generally people would play very explosive cards as their final card. Uh, monsters would play with Woodlands uh, with the plus eight, and Eth Ethne would play like Shearer as a finisher. So Pitfall's not seeing like any play anymore. Mahakam Horn... Problem with Mahakam Horn is people are still running artifact removal, and if your Mahakam Horn gets removed, you cry a lot because that card costs a nine, uh, and to get that removed feels terrible. Um, yeah, this is not the buff that Trap Squirtle needed, so 
Yeah, you're still not going to play this card. Melina now has Zeal. Melina is a, I think it's 7p. It might be 9p. I don't know. Too expensive. But Melina, 4 strength. Every turn you get to move a card. Um, who cares? Movement Squiatel is not very good. Uh, it's cute. If you get a bunch of engines on the board, you can start. I mean, if you can play this on the board and you get like the brigade that pings a card by two whenever you move it, and you have Melina and you have like Strays and Dragoon, you start moving around, starts pinging for two a lot. Yeah, it's cute and all, but <laughs> you're gonna hope you queue into a deck that has no removal and no locks. And right now, we're that's exactly what the meta is like. Everyone is running Dorigary, people are running Siren, people are running anything that has the word lock on it is played in decks because engines are still good because more people are playing engines because Scoia'tael is abysmal in terms of removal. So yeah, this card will get locked or removed uh, or muzzled. I saw muzzled twice today. It blew my mind. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this card still sucks. Nilfgaard, Morvin, leader ability change to order, reveal a random card from your opponent's deck and boost an ally by two, charge three. So it's similar to Bruver in that it boosts a unit by two and you have a total of three charges. You can use uh, zero to three charges uh, in round one, two, or three. Uh, Morvin was completely broken. It was like the auto pick Nilfgaard leader. Like you play it in every Nilfgaard deck. It was just insane. You keep any engine alive, it was a nutty leader. Um, yeah, it got nerfed pretty hard. Uh, honestly, what I thought they were going to do was, so before it was three for bronze, four for gold. I thought they were going to do two for bronze, three for gold, uh, but they just straight out cut it to two. So pretty heavy nerf. Uh, it still does have the reveal. So if you're playing like mangonels or spheres, you're still getting value for those. So it's still the leader you're going to play for reveal, but uh, yeah, pretty heavy nerf. Uh, you might not see much play out of reveal anymore, which... I guess it's sad because Nilfgaard might lose Reveal as an archetype, but Reveal as an archetype wasn't healthy for the game. I think almost everybody can agree with me that no one liked playing against Reveal. It was just unfun because, yeah, sometimes you win the game because your opponent, like, low rolls on Reveals every single time, and then other times they would just reveal everything. They would play Spotters and reveal, like, a 6 to 13, or they'd play Arthesius and roll Tibor and get a 17-point goal, and, yeah, there was no counterplay, so... uh I really hope they just rework Reveal completely, but I mean, this is a good step in the right direction. If you make Reveal unplayable, then technically it's okay. It's like their old argument with uh, Create back with Midwinter Patch. The idea with Create was it adds a little spice to people who want to add like randomness to their game, variance to their game. Uh, the problem was it was viable. Uh, they said that they would make it so that it wasn't viable at like high rank, but that didn't happen. Uh, create was very much viable so uh yeah i mean it, it's a band-aid fix i'm really hoping they redo like a full rework on reveal at some point but uh for now this is okay m here number of redraws from two to three it's nice uh you're gonna see some more m here now i actually saw m here maybe three or four games today people are playing it with zoltan uh picking up zoltan and replaying it for the froth effect uh if you have a full row of nine it's an 18 point leader which is I mean, that's insane. 18 point leader is phenomenal. So, uh, yeah, I'm here's not bad anymore. Usurper! <laughs> so, if you're familiar with my YouTube, I have posted maybe three or four Usurper decks, uh, or like games or highlights, whatever. Um, I like Usurper because, yeah, you can kind of. It, he's like control oriented, right? In that you deny your opponent's leader, and a lot of times uh, your opponent builds their deck around leader. Uh, for some reason, on day one, on day one after the patch, I queued into four Arrakis Queen decks in a row because of the change. I guess people really wanted to try Arrakis Queen. All four of those games, I had Usurper. So, uh, yeah, they weren't happy. Arrakis Queen is probably the leader that gets countered the hardest by uh, Usurper because quite literally your entire deck is built around your leader. So, uh, yeah, rip Arrakis Queen. Um, so... As I suspected, Usurper is good now. Usurper is a strong leader uh, for two reasons. One, it got the plus one mulligan that it needed. And two, Witchers got nerfed. So Witchers and Roach both got nerfed, both of which were auto-included in like 80, 90% of decks. 
So yeah, Usurper is quite strong because it no longer is held back by the lack of mulligans. One mulligan is more than enough because the only card that I play right now that you need to mulligan is Roach because the Sire is still really strong. Um, in my all human Usurper deck, uh, you have, uh, what's it called? The three drop that pulls the other three drop from your deck. I'm blanking out on the name. I mentioned it earlier. Anyway, uh, it's the three drop that tutors the other three drop out if you play it on the melee row. Uh, so you have two bricks and one mulligan. Uh, I've never bricked on it. It's a very strong deck. Uh, if you're looking for an usurper deck, there's two of them out there that are pretty good. There's the dragon one, which is just dragon usurper. Um, I played a lot of that before. Uh, it's still very good. And then there's a new one. It's a uh, human usurper. Basically, the entire deck is all humans. Uh, and then you play Doppler. Doppler is basically for every... Uh, card in your hand that has the same tag or primary tag it gets boosted by one so if you play one doppler in round one and you only have one doppler in your hand it's a 10 point doppler yeah 10 point doppler that's insane uh if you have two dopplers in round one they're both nine which is insane um like yeah it's it, bananas so uh i should be posting a human usurper deck probably tomorrow so you can uh, look forward to that but uh yeah usurper's good you're going to start seeing Usurper on ladder. The, the the biggest weaknesses of Usurper, the Witchers and the Zero Mulligans, were both fixed. So, uh, yeah, Usurper's coming, boys. Slave Infantry, Recruit Cost Change from 6 to 7. Not a surprise. The card was on the top three of the strongest three cards in the game, or for bronzes. So, it's still a really good card. I play this card in my Human Usurper deck. Um, it's a 5 that flips a, another card to a five so if you flip a three to five you're getting seven value uh flipping a three to five is not hard to do uh, if you flip a two or a one you're getting insane value uh the only time you're losing value is if you flip nothing or you flip a four or a five um that doesn't happen very often i mean if you're really having issue you can run germain and flip cows over so still a very good card it's just not completely broken arbalist damage amount change from two to one um this is a three strength ping an enemy by well now it's one it used to be two uh and then you both reveal a card if you had the higher card it pinged for an extra two so it had the potential of being seven value for five which was completely broken uh not to mention it had synergy with cards like spheres and manganels uh this card was auto included in every nilf card deck yeah the card was completely broken um even in non-reveal decks now it is a card that you only play in reveal decks because it is a four for five and potentially five for five, uh, but the reveal procs are worth it. So good card in reveal, but not auto include complete broken nonsense. Uh, and it means engines actually have a chance of living. So I like the change. Uh, honestly, I thought they were gonna make it do two damage. And then if the reveal effect went off and you won, it would do one damage, but they toned it down even more to one and one. So. Uh, I mean, anything to nerf reveal, I think is good. It's a band-aid, as I um, mentioned earlier with Morvin. But uh, yeah, not a surprising change at all. Delirian Soldier power changed from 4 to 3. I was actually pretty surprised by this. Delirian Soldier is a card that's 5 provisions in your deck. Uh, if you reveal it, it gets pulled out and played onto the board. Uh, this card was auto-included in reveal, obviously. Um, I actually didn't think this card was going to get nerfed, but uh, it looks like they want to nerf reveal like across the board so i mean i can't complain reveal as i mentioned earlier is not fun to play against because it feels like you can't do anything uh reveal had stupid tempo with cards like manganel uh morvin delarian soldier recruit so I, I like the change obviously i think most people unless you're like a one trick reveal player um most people are going to be pr pretty happy with these reveal changes recruit Another nerf to reveal. Recruit cost change from 4 to 5. This was another another nutty card. It was a 4 for 4. 100% of the time. And X percentage of the time. It would boost it by 2 if you won the Joust. Uh, another auto-include card. Uh, it also works well with reveal. So, yeah. I'm glad it got toned down. It's still good in reveal. It's just not completely broken. Um, so yeah, you still play the reveal, but outside of reveal, you don't play this card. Swayze recruit cost change from eight to nine. Not a surprise. Swayze was insane. Yeah, pretty straightforward. False theory recruit cost change from eight to seven. Um, I believe it's 
four strength. Depending on if you play it on melee or range, you can either move one of your opponent's card or destroy an artifact. Yeah. Um, yeah. Garbage. Um, yeah, I, the movement's nice, but you can't move your own cards. So if this card had the ability to move your cards, the ability to kill an artifact and cost 6p, I would play it. In its current form, it is still unplayable. Hefty Halog, power change from 2 to 3. This is the card you saw no play, but uh, it's basically... I think it's like 8p, I think. Um, it's like melee locked for every soldier you have on the row. Ping an enemy by 1 or something. It has immune on it. I guess it's okay in an all-in soldier deck. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Not a big deal. Uh, cool. Whatever. He's still not going to play the card. Uh, game fixes. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because there's a lot of them. I'll, I'll mention the ones that are actually important. Uh, botchling. So, yeah. <laughs> so apparently when botchling, before when botchling was damaged, if you click on it and flipped it over to the other one, which would uh, boost your unit, uh, lubricant, um, it would reset the power back to five. Uh, this was kind of cool. It was an engine that was basically unkillable. The problem was... It was an engine that's unkillable, uh, and because Ethne got hammered, um, it means most decks cannot kill this. Most decks cannot do five damage to a unit out of the blue. Um, yeah, they just can't. Four is usually the highest, so five is like the sweet spot of you can't kill this, uh, other than like crack Cryonex. Uh, Cryonex with Unicorn in hand can still kill this, and Lox can kill it. So. Not too surprised this card was nerfed. Um, maybe they should have bring the... It wasn't nerfed, it was bug fix, but obviously the bug fix is a massive nerf to it because it can't just keep healing itself every single turn. Uh, the, I mean, you have to admit, the card is insane. Uh, it would just run away with a round because it was one point every turn and it felt like there was no way to counter it. Um, so I'm not surprised. I, I do wish they brought the P cost down by one, but uh, yeah. Oh well, feels bad. Card's not auto included anymore. It's only good if you're playing a deck with like Tritum Infantry because you can utilize the boost, um, or Ana, I guess, or a deck with a ton of engines. Because in a deck with a ton of engines, you just want to play a bunch of cards that are lockable so that eventually some of them stick. Um, uh, doesn't matter. Okay, so this is a funny bug. Um, every now and then a card would be revealed. The two that I can think of is. If you were to call of the forest, like let's say an officer in round one uh, into your deck and play another card, uh, and then round three you draw that officer, I would, or the other person would be able to see that you have an officer in your hand. It would be flipped up. Uh, the other time this happened was when you decoyed a card. So uh, Beast SK with, I'm blanking on the name. The one that allows you to discard a card basically thin your deck. Um... I cannot think of the name. Anyways, uh, the deck would thin to zero, and then it would decoy a bear master, and then play the bear master again, uh, which was kind of cool. Uh, sometimes they would have to use decoy earlier on, and then the card that they decoyed would be visible or revealed in the hand uh, later on. So kind of a weird bug, but obviously a good change. Fix a uh, there's a weird bug with SK when you um, frayed or res a card from your graveyard. It would flip it over. Uh, and you wouldn't be able to see it. It had like the old ambush effect where it'd be upside down. It's just kind of weird. You could hover over to see it, but uh, yeah, good change or good fix, obviously. Uh, Tainted Ale, every now and then Tainted Ale, you wouldn't be able to use it because, well, I don't know. Uh, fix an issue where Nilf Guardian Knight would destroy itself. So Nilf Guardian Knight reads uh, boost an enemy by two. It's six strength, boost an enemy by two. Uh, and then it, it reads... If there's no enemy on the enemy side of the board, it basically kills itself. Um, but if your opponent had an immune card, because it didn't boost it, it would still kill itself. So it, it was kind of wonky. It only applied to when your opponent had like an immune card, but it, it was really, yeah, it was poorly worded. So I'm glad they fixed it. It's not really going to matter, but uh, yeah, every now and then it would matter. Uh, yeah, good change. Uh, it's weird. Immune, so immune cards lost their immunity when you renewed them. So if you play Frighteners, 
uh, Frightener and you proc it, you can renew it later for a 12 point immune big boy, which is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, but it means you can uh, renew, uh, say, Synthesis or like Milva if you need to. Um... Count Caldwell. <laughs> yeah. Um... This is a bug fix, but it makes the card go from unplayable other than maybe a big monster deck to like meta. This card is phenomenal. This card is really, really good now. Um, before, let's say your opponent had a four strength card and you play Count Caldwell on your side of the board, it would go to your opponent's side of the board because Count Caldwell wouldn't count himself. Uh, now he does, which means unless your opponent has a 10 or higher, this card is a 10 for eight which is really good. The only card that comes close to that is a Sire, which is a nine for eight. Um, this card's really good. Uh, yeah, it's it's high risk, high reward. If you queue into big monsters and you have no tall removal or resets, uh, you can't play Count Calvo, otherwise you give your opponents 10 free points. Uh, do note the way it works with ties. If you have Count Calvo on the board and your opponent has a 10 point card on their side of the board, uh, it's a 50-50 flip. 50% of the time, he'll stay on your side of the board. 50% of the time, he'll flip over to your opponent's side of the board. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, but, yeah, this, this card's really good, especially if you have a way to boost it or a way to damage your opponent's cards. So I've been playing this a lot in Scoia'tael because I use cards like Bruver, which, once again, allows me to boost or uh, damage my opponent's cards or my cards. Um, and I use Say some Thesis, so it's an 8-point dragon, and then I boost it by, like, plus 4 with, like, Unicorn. Uh, and then I have the high of 12. So if your opponent plays Count Caldwell, they well, they can't because you have the highest unit and it's untargetable. So this card's really, really good. Um, side note, top three cards that are kind of auto-include in most decks are Unicorn, Chironex, and Count Caldwell. Um, yeah, Count is really, really good. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's as auto-include as Unicorn and Chironex, but uh, it, it's pretty close any deck that plays any kind of damage i mean shit even unicorn and chironex help it out because you can boost a unit uh or you can damage your opponent's side of the unit uh so yeah this card's really good uh you're gonna start seeing this card a lot sabrina could damage units in hand if her death wish was triggered by ritual sacrifice <laughs> i didn't even know this was a thing um yeah if this went off and damage my cards in my hand. I don't know what I'd do. That's hilarious. I don't even know how to bug. Yeah, I don't know. But obviously a good fix. Roach will no longer be summoned when your opponent plays a gold unit on their player side. Of the... Okay, so if you played Cantarella on your opponent's side of the board and they had Roach, it would actually pull Roach out, which is obviously a bug. Um, good fix. Uh... Swears, uh, if you mulligan Swears back into your deck, it would reset his uh, reveal count, which was really buggy. Okay. This, this is weird. Uh, uh, so as I... Nope, not this. Milva would be boosted by Squatel Artifacts. This is a slight nerf to Milva. Uh, they, yeah... Okay, so this I also mentioned earlier with Spectres, um, John Natalis now procs like your Spectres spawn by uh, Drog so that they can just keep going. So John Natalis is actually pretty good. Um, I, I, I still don't think he's good enough, but he's not bad and he can surprise your opponent if your opponent doesn't see it coming. Um, Pavko had a weird bug where if you played a trap, it would reproc Pavko's ability to ping again. Saskia was targeting immune cards, which, yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you flip traps, it would double proc Elven Scout for some reason. Um, Yaven no longer counts himself for an ability. Uh, this kind of sucks. Uh, I wish they buffed Yaven by one to counter this, but uh, yeah. Yaven is a card where you play it on the board, and depending on how many elves on the board you have, you ping for that amount. So if you have three elves on the board... It used to ping for four, so it would count himself, but now it does not, uh, which sucks. I mean, Yaven was seeing no play, and now he will definitely not see any play. Uh, it kind of sucks, but, uh, you know, nerf Squayatel. Um, 
They fix the Siri bug where if you have two series on the board and the round ended, uh, the game would end and your opponent would win or you would win depending on who used the bug. So uh, obviously a good change. Um, I think those are the most important. These don't really matter. Um... Yeah, okay, so uh, a lot of bugs fixed. Obviously, there there were some game-breaking bugs, mainly Siri. Uh, very happy. Oh, I, I didn't read it. Warmonger. Warmonger used to be able to destroy Tactical Advantage, which was an immune card. They fixed that, which is obviously a good fix. Um, so, yeah, uh, pretty lengthy video. Uh, if you sat through this whole thing, I'm very surprised. Well done. Um, so, yeah, my overall opinions... I'm happy. Uh, I like basically every change. I, I think they went a little overboard with Squiatel, but uh, they do that pretty often. So I'm not too surprised Squiatel is still good. It's just one of their leaders is not good anymore, but whatever. Just play Bruber. Um, the dwarf buffs were nice. Northern Realms is still good. Skellige is still very good. Monsters is still very good. Um, Nilfgaard is still good. So the best Nilfgaard deck was Reveal. Uh, I think Nilfgaard will still be good. It'll just take a little bit of time. Usurper is very strong right now. Um, yeah, Usurper is phenomenal. I love Usurper. Easily my favorite Nilfgaard leader. Uh, bug fixes are great. So all in all, great patch. A lot of the broken bronzes and gold cards were nerfed. Uh, some of them are still playable. Uh, game fixes are obviously good. Um, engines are playable now because Squiatel was nerfed. And... As much as I love Squiatel, as much as it is my favorite faction, it was hurting the meta. Right? Being it, the ability to not be able to play any engines against uh, Squiatel just sucked. So, I love the change. Um, yeah. So, uh, overall, I'm very happy with these this patch. Uh, the biggest thing for me, other than the engines are now playable and, like, Wolfsbane and Wild Boar of the Sea were nerfed is this right here. Being able to see that deck tracker or being able to see the cards left in your deck is just... Oh, I was so happy. I had a grin on my face the rest of the day after I saw this because, oh, it's just beautiful. I was so happy about this. So thank you so much, CDPR, for giving us the ability to see our cards. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed this very lengthy patch review. Um, let me know if there were some cards that weren't nerfed that you thought should have been nerfed. Um, let me know if they, if you think they overkilled something. The only thing I think they overkilled was probably Prince Dennis. They went maybe one a little too high. I think they should have nerfed it by maybe one P. And they went a little too hard on some of the bronzes in Scoia'tael. But honestly, I'm okay with it. Uh, Nilfgaard, they, they hit Reveal pretty hard, but I think that was warranted. Uh, Skellige's fine, Monster's fine. Uh, I don't know why they nerfed, um, Ruin, but whatever. Uh, Scorch got hit pretty hard. But, uh, yeah, overall, once again, love the patch. Let me know what you think they could have done differently, and, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.